And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today in our new weekly format. This is ACAP Today for the week of May 18th, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Eurista County Action Program. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the program. Today we're going to talk about a poopery of things. We're going to talk about healthcare navigation. We're also going to talk about the Home Energy Assistance Program and check in on how that program is doing and, and what services are available for folks right now. And also speak about workforce uh, with our two guests. Uh, we'll be joined by Stan Targonsky and Aaron Ben who will explain their roles in just a little bit um, and, uh, and join us in the conversation. But before we do that, we want to get to today's um, information that you can use about programs and services uh, that we are offering here at the Arusta County Action Program and some of our community partners uh, that can be of assistance to you at this time. So we do that um, by reminding folks, first of all, that our offices will remain closed to the public through at least May 31st. We are preparing to reopen childcare services in a limited capacity on the 8th of June, and we'll be announcing uh, future plans in terms of uh, direct uh, client service um, in an in-person format as we move through the summer months. But our offices, all offices, all locations will remain closed through the 31st of May. We've also launched a new program, not to be confused with the Healthcare Navigator program that we'll be talking with Stan Targonsky about in just a little bit, but the ACAP Navigator program, uh, which are individuals that we're putting in place to be able to help uh, families and individuals out there uh, that may be struggling through this time and are in need of services and being connected with services and really don't uh, completely understand what services might be available for them. So we're both doing outreach in that regard, but also welcoming folks to call us and have conversations with our navigators uh, to, to help be connected with services and understand what's available for you folks. So please do call us on that uh, 764-3721 if we can be of assistance to you and connect you with the navigator. We're also hiring at this time. We have a number of positions, current openings uh, that are available on our website and we're able to do everything up to and including orientation uh, in a virtual format such as this. So if you are interested in employment, please do check out the ACAP uh, website uh, for jobs with ACAP. We also are reminding folks that if you are interested in, in services, you can certainly call us, but you can also go on to our website and there's a, a button on our homepage that uh, is as it shows here on the screen to request assistance online. That will take you to a portal that will um, allow you to fill in several um, pieces of information about you or your household uh, for us that will allow us to connect directly with you. Uh, and when we do call, we'll have information that we, uh, that we need that might indicate what services you're already pre presumptively eligible for. So please do consider uh, logging on to the website and using this form uh, as a way to connect with us. We are offering another one of our financial literacy classes. This is backed by popular demand. We've had two classes since uh, the pandemic uh, began and we uh, have been moved to online platforms. And the popularity of those classes has prompted us to offer a third on the 27th, 28th and 29th of May. This is specifically targeted for individuals age 16 through 24. Uh, and again, all classes will be held via Zoom. If you're interested, uh, please do call Chastity uh, Holland or reach out to her by email, I should say, at Holland at acap-me.org. Uh, if you do attend and participate in all classes, you will be uh, awarded a $25 gift card at the end of that successful course completion. The Aroostook Cash Coalition is resuming their uh, tax prep services. This is sponsored by the County Federal Credit Union and hosted by the United Way of Aroostook with a number of other community partners, including the Aroostook County Action Program that are engaged in this work. If you have not yet filed your 2019 taxes, the deadline has been extended to July 15th and your household income is below $56,000, we certainly encourage you to call the United Way of Aroostook uh, to make an appointment. Appointments are being conducted uh, over the phone at this time so uh, for your safety and the safety of the volunteer tax preparers. Uh, we are also helping the community in this way remotely um, in terms of individuals who are interested in quitting smoking at this time. We have uh, Elaine Seip who is working in this program with us. Uh, it's free and convenient uh, help that's available to you and we can certainly counsel and meet with you in this format via Zoom and we'll work with you to set that up. Please do consider giving Elaine a call if you've been thinking about quitting smoking. Um, and would like to consider that and your options at this point, even if it's just to talk about what your options might be at this point, Elaine is here to help. 
We also want to remind folks that we are, if you know someone who's housing insecure or homeless, that we do have the wellness shelter for experiencing for individuals experiencing homelessness um, at the uh, University of Maine at Presque Isle. This is a partnership with UMPI and Maine Housing and other community partners. Uh, please do reach out to us if you know of someone who could use these services at this time. We're also winding down a rental assistance program uh, through Maine Housing uh, for individuals who are behind or unable to pay this month's rent. So we're talking at this point about May's rent. Um, we, we are looking at future uh, funding for a rental assistance program moving forward later this summer. We hope to have more information uh, about that in the coming weeks to you, but this uh, program will expire at the end of this month and is for, for May's rent at this point. We've served almost 400 uh, county uh, individuals that are in need of assistance for rent. You do have to have your household income impacted by COVID-19 to qualify, but otherwise the qualification standards are not uh, that that difficult uh, to attain. So please do consider if you are having difficulty paying your rent because of COVID-19 related uh, financial uh, circumstances to log on to mainhousing.org slash COVID rent or you can call us at 764-3721 and we will actually help you complete the application online uh, over the phone. And the challenges out there, uh, our Let's Go 5210 program, uh, as well as Northern Light AR Gould, have the Get Out and Get Moving in the Community in May challenge. If you are getting out there, getting active with your family or socially distancing with a friend and being active, take a photo of you doing that and send it to Don Roberts at droberts at northernlight.org. And at each week on Friday, a random winner is picked from those photo entries and uh, someone wins a basket of goodies from ACAP and Northern Light AR Gould. It's a great promotion and a great way to get your family active uh, during the pandemic. And now that the weather is better, a great opportunity to enjoy great weather as well. And we are also are currently accepting applications for both a special summer and our fall 2020 session of the Head Start program. Please do call us if you, if you have a, a preschool age child uh, that you think might benefit from this program. It really is a program that benefits the entire family. Um, and please do call us if you'd like more information or an application which can be all done online as well. And with that, uh, we will move on now to uh, welcome our guests to the program. It's a pleasure to welcome both Stan Targonsky, who is a career counselor, but does more than that. And we'll be talking about that with Stan in just a moment. Stan, welcome to ACAP today, your first appearance. Well, thank you very much, Jason. Glad to be here. Thank you. Nice to have you. It looks like you have a, a beautiful home there with a lot of natural woodwork. Yeah, yeah, we do. It, it's pretty neat. It's like a camp. Home. And, and, and I, well, it, it's a great day to be at camp today, I must say. Erin yeah, <laughs> Benson also joins us. She's a repeat customer on ACAP today. Erin, um, welcome. In her lowly uh, office. <laughs> yes, it, it's not <laughs> quite not so camp-like there. That's right. <laughs> and I, I just will add that yesterday I took a three-mile walk and I neglected to take a picture of myself, so I'll have to do that tonight and send it to Don. Absolutely. We want to get you in contention for that basket of goodies. There's two more weeks of drawings to be held before that program expires. So we'll get you in there. Well, let's uh, launch into our conversation today. And I wanted to start with you, Stan, because we did introduce you uh, as a career counselor with workforce development. But there's also another program that you, um, you are responsible for with the agency, and that's the Healthcare Navigator Program. So tell everyone what that program is and what you do in that program. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you, Jason. Um, my name is Stan Targonsky, and as Jason said, I'm a healthcare navigator, and I have been for the past seven years. Uh, each of the seven years, there's a uh, training that we have to go through to uh, redo our certifications and, and make us uh, eligible, eligible to become uh, healthcare navigators. And that way we can assist people uh, who are seeking health care for themselves and or their family, we can help them with the uh, navigate through the healthcare.gov site. Uh, and, and, and I continue to do that today. And I continue to do that even though working remotely. It's a little more challenging, but uh, so long as I can get the word out there and have people call me directly at my ACAP phone, at area code 207-554-4158. Please leave a message there 
and uh, with a short brief message with your name and phone number, and I will return your call, uh, you know, the, as soon as I get them. I check that very frequently. Uh, so th there's no chance of me missing your call. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, normally people uh, are looking for health care. And uh, there are uh, this year, this year is kind of unique, 2020, because they've also removed the penalties for if you don't have health care. So we saw during open enrollment, which is normally November 1 through December 15, we, we saw possibly a little decrease in the numbers of people applying for health care this year, Jason. And, 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 and I don't know uh, if it's because of the, the, uh, the lack of the penalties anymore or uh, in Arusta County, we're an aging society. So maybe some are going on to the federally funded program at this time. And, uh, and, and some are possibly even going into the expanded main care, which I think is great because they're trying to eliminate, we've all heard of the donut hole. Well, and, and, and that kind of that kind of shores it up a little bit, okay, to not let people slip through the cracks. Now, normally, normally, with the, uh, if a person was getting health care for themselves, okay, I'll just use an individual person at this time to give some people some real numbers, okay? Uh, there's, uh, the health care would normally be set up uh, for, to assist a person in paying their monthly premiums by having uh, health uh, health care premium uh, tax premium credits, and and those are available for people that fall between the the uh, income range of 138 percent of federal federal poverty uh, guidelines up to 400 percent of the federal poverty guidelines. So for a single person. We're looking at someone that's at seventeen thousand two hundred and thirty-six dollars gross, all the way up to forty-nine thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars gross. So if you fall between the, the range, you're you're eligible for tax uh, premium uh, tax credits that will go against or be sent to uh, be assigned to you, but they'll be sent to your healthcare. Uh, insurance company to lessen, to decrease your monthly health care uh, insurance premium. And, and that works for a lot of people unless you fall below the 138%. Uh, in that case, uh, uh, those people used to be in, in the donut hole, they call it. Uh, or, you know, uh, so uh, even today, I can still do an application on folks. And when it comes down to the uh, determining eligibility of which, what they qualify for, uh, if a person does fall in that donut hole category, they fall below the 138 percentile, that application will now be sent directly from the marketplace right to DHHS in Maine. And they'll make a determination and follow up uh, within 60 days, 45 to 60 days normally. Now, Stan, that's, that's a, a, a lot of information. So I think part of the reason why you are here is um, that can be very complex and confusing for people to, to understand all of that. So you are a resource available for folks to help them navigate that, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. And uh, what are you? And, yes. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask you, what are you seeing in terms of, um, of what's happening right now? You were, we were talking before we started recording the interview today about we haven't seen necessarily what, what we might have expected to see given what's happening with the economy. So talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm part of the, uh, the consortium, too, of, of navigators. And, and we, we just had a meeting on Tuesday, yesterday. Uh, where we all said, you know, the onslaught of phone calls to us, uh, people needing or wanting um, uh, health care, uh, really hasn't occurred yet. Uh, it, it's very, uh, very few calls. Um, and I think uh, that can be attributed to a number of different issues. 
especially during this COVID-19 period of time. I think people are still trying to get their unemployment checks straightened out, uh, trying to get some kind of family income coming in, uh, looking for the basics. Uh, even toilet paper is still scarce. Um, and it seemed like every week there was a different uh, commodity shortage here in the stores. Uh, so I think people are just taking their time, uh, you know, trying to get their basic and get their household in order before they start thinking about health care, you know. But I think uh, if people do have uh, any issues right now, uh, for instance, if they're still employed, they have health care even through their employer or through the uh, health uh, uh, health care, the marketplace, you know, uh, and I think everything will go on as normal for them. If people have health care through the marketplace and they've experienced uh, uh, a loss of income or cut in hours or pay or, or receive the layoff notice and, and their incomes change, please have them call the marketplace, okay, uh, or call me and I'll give them the number and they can call the marketplace to report that within the 30-day window. I mean, just to keep the marketplace abreast of what's going on. Uh, there's also another uh, through the state. The state has also provided uh, coverage for uh, COVID testing and so forth. If people are uninsured and don't have health care uh, right now, uh, they can also call and make an application for uh, uh, at uh, coverme.gov or uh, make an application for main care at mymainconnection.gov. And I think uh, those would be uh, two, two great ways to gain coverage, at least for COVID-19 testing and so forth, if they don't have insurance. But again, I, I, I refer people to my, home, my uh, phone number at ACAP, 554-4158. Please leave me a message. I will get back in touch with them to discuss their, their individual needs. Great, and I'm certain as you as you pointed out, people just haven't processed maybe that far along in, 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 in where healthcare is an immediate concern or healthcare insurance coverage is an immediate concern. But as we continue to move ahead in the, in the weeks and months ahead, that may be a, a, a very helpful resource and we certainly appreciate you being there uh, for folks in Aroostook County. Um, Aaron Benson, one of the other programs that you oversee here at ACAP is the Home Energy Assistance Program, and oftentimes we talk about um, how important it is to have a warm and safe home, especially in, during the cold winter months in Aroostook County. And although we're entering the uh, the less rough sledding period, I would say, of Aroostook County weather, um, the Home Energy Assistance Program is still very much there for folks and will be uh, for a couple more months. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, well, I think we've tried to get the word out, uh, but I still think for some people it hasn't sunk in that um, we've changed the uh, eligibility guidelines. And so we've lifted the bar as far as the amount of income that you're able um, to earn in order to uh, be eligible. And so there are a lot of people who might have applied in 2017, 16, 18 that were over income that would be eligible now, but you know, they're just in their minds, they think, oh, that's not for me. I, I was uh, denied once or twice and it's not for me. So I would really encourage people if they've been denied in the past, um, the income uh, guidelines are right on the um, ACAP uh, website and um, they can certainly call and ask about it. Uh, we're ha we talk to people all the time, but I would, I would definitely encourage people to uh, come back and see if they do qualify. Um, I think uh, the other thing too is for people who who uh, haven't applied, this is a great time to apply because first of all, uh, the appointments are wide open um, and, and you will be getting, um, if you get the benefit, the benefit goes uh, on your account at your vendor and you can, you have 18 months to use it. So for somebody who has not applied this heating season, and you know they're probably thinking, oh gosh, it was 60 degrees yesterday. I don't, I don't need any oil. I'm not worried about being cold. You can doing it now. You're going to set yourself up for when the cold weather happens in October or November, or you know, hopefully it won't happen until December. <laughs> um, but you're setting yourself up. And so um, there, I will say there was a, a little bit of confusion that people think that they can. Uh, um, the heating season goes from uh, August 
through July. And so somebody who had an appointment this October, they can't get another appointment now because you're still in that same season. But for somebody who has not had an appointment from August 2019 through to this uh, moment in time, please call and, and make an appointment and see if uh, you're eligible for a benefit. Because uh, like I said, you'll be setting yourself up um, for uh, next winter. But it's very important that people understand that if you do get an appointment next week, for example, which I believe there are some available, that that, that benefit will not expire on July 15th, even though the season is ending. Yeah, it, it's funny because I was just talking with um, a young lady uh, last week and she said, oh, well, I won't get enough because they'll only give me enough to get through this heating season. And I said, no, whatever, you know, I mean, it's, it, the benefit is based on your income. It's based on the number of people in your household, uh, how many rooms are in your house. Um, so it's, it's all of these factors. And whatever you're eligible for, that's the benefit that you'll get. And then you have 18 months in order to use it. So it's not like, oh, well, gosh, it's, it's May 20th, and we're only going to give her, you know, a tenth of her benefit because, you know, that's all that's uh, left of this heating season. That is not how this works at all. When, whenever you apply, you get the benefit that's based on, um, you know, your situation, and then you have 18 months to use it. So I would really encourage people. We're, we pulled a list of uh, people who, um, from the last heating season, 2018, who were denied because they were over um, income. And we're gonna start calling them to say, hey, you might be eligible this time around. So let's get you in and, and, and see, uh, you know, based on um, your income now that if you're eligible. And because I, I bet you a lot of them will be. Because some people miss it by, you know, $500. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's important for people to give it a second chance. And we are announcing that we're starting a new service on June 1st because one of the challenges we've had is folks getting in uh, the documentation, proof of income documentation, things like that. So you want to talk about how we'll be able to help folks um, at that point and how we're helping them now in terms of getting what they can to us. Yes, this with all of the closings, it's been terribly difficult. The, the heat process, uh, there's a lot of documentation, a lot of paperwork, and I know that that's a hardship for some people, but you know, we require things like a copy of your valid driver's license, a copy of a social security card from all of the people in your household. And people don't want to send us their real driver's license, and we don't want them to do that either. I mean, somebody sent us a passport the other day, and it was like, oh my heavens. Um, so we, we don't want that. Um, but people have been very limited about where they can go and make photocopies. You know, oh, I used to go to my library, I used to go to my town office, and all of them have been closed. Well, slowly those places are starting to open up, but we've tried to triage with people. Can you, I've walked people through how to use their smartphone to take a picture of their driver's license and then email it to us um, just on their phone. We've, they've taken pictures of, of their driver's license, their social security cards, uh, pay stubs, their application, all of the documents. I mean, we have photographs of just about everything. Um, so we've been trying to help people um, because all of the offices are closed. Well, come June 1st, um, a lot of the places where people have gone before will be open, like libraries are opening up, and as, as I said, town offices. But also, we're going to provide some cur curbside service. So we're going to have a photocopier in the lobby, and if somebody drives up and says, you know, they'll have to call, and, the, you know, I, I have a, uh, you know, a passport that needs to be photocopied or whatever. We're going to have somebody that we can have them walk out with masks and, and gloves, and, you know, we'll have to figure out something about the, the, the social distancing. So it might be that they leave an envelope outside the door and then back away, and then we come out and get the envelope, and we're going to be able to do uh, photocopying that way. But we'll continue to take photographs of things, um, emails, uh, faxes. Some people are able to go to a doctor's office and fax things. And so, you know, we, we work with each individual to try and, and get all of the documentation that we need in, in the ways that are most convenient for them. Great, so um, another service, let's pivot to workforce development now that both the UN stand are involved in. Um, how are things uh, with workforce development uh, right now? Obviously, um, schools, uh, colleges, and universities have gone to online learning platforms, and some employers are not uh, currently in business. So how are you working with customers in workforce development at this time? Well, um, we're open for business. 
uh, not walk in traffic, but um, I know that uh, Stan and, and Mary and Kathy have all been reaching out to their clients uh, via email, the telephone, Zoom, um, however, you know, however we can connect with people. Uh, but I think it's important that, um, that everyone understands that we are open for business. Uh, this is a time when a lot of people have lost their jobs. Now, some people have just been laid off or furloughed and they're expecting to go back, which is fine. They're getting their unemployment. But for some people, it may be an opportunity to say, hmm, do I want to, do I want, this is an opportunity to think about my future and do I want to change tracks? Do I want to, you know, think about uh, a, a different career? Do I want to um, entertain being trained? I can tell you, I, I would encourage anybody to become a plumber because <laughs> I can't get one to come to my house. Um, so this is an opportunity for people to think about uh, different, a different career pathway. And, and that's what we're here for. Um, we can talk to people about uh, taking a, um, some assessments to see what areas that uh, they really like, what areas of interest that they have that might um, lead to a particular career. We can talk about ways that we can support your training, support services like um, clothing. You know, I need work boots or I need, uh, you know, scrubs to become a CNA. Um, I need transportation, uh, a gas money to help me get someplace. I need childcare. These are all kinds of support services that we can help people with. So um, I'm going to let Stan talk because he's uh, working more directly with clients than I am. And how are how are clients holding up right now? Yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, the ones that are in my caseload, I've been communicating them through emails, uh, some through Facebook even, uh, just to monitor how they're doing. Uh, I've got some people that are that their training has been paused at colleges uh, right now because of uh, there weren't any uh, state uh, testers available to uh, to give them permit tests and licensing testing, um, so they're on pause. Uh, I've also uh, yeah, emailing people back and forth and uh, getting grades that way and and future plans for the fall that way and writing plans and it, it, it's everything we're doing but remotely um, and uh, I think uh, you know. Gaining, gaining a few uh, new people, uh, working with them to try to get the, uh, the documentation that they need together. Uh, for instance, if they're a veteran, they'll need a copy of their DD-214 and, and, and finding out how to obtain that for them and sending them that information so they could do, get that. That's important. That's, that's what one of the, the building steps, I call it, you know, to applying. Uh, making sure that, uh, you know, people... Uh, do participate in some assessment, and we can do that. Making sure that some people can uh, can uh, uh, get obtain a username and password through the job link system. I think that's vitally important since that's how we sign our documentation now. And uh, through uh, through technology and the use of Zoom and and learning how to use that app uh, over the past seven weeks, you know. It's getting to the point where, hey, I can actually share a document on my screen with somebody, have them take over remote control, find their name, and give it back to me. I mean, honest, Jason, that's something I could not have done eight weeks ago, okay? Okay? So, uh, but no, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's, it, business, we're open for business, and, and it's, it's, the end goal is going to be the same. How we get there is just going to be a little bit different, you know, and, and that's the thing. I mean, and we all work together, and, and that's what I like really about working for workforce development. Uh, if, if one has a problem, holy cow, you get three other people, you know, you know, helping out, you know, and, and we all work together, and, and, you know, and we've always done that at, at ACAP anyways to, to assist our community and, and, and make it better, you know what I mean? So Stan, we talked about how healthcare navigation and um, HEAP, how you can just pick up the phone and call. Is it the same with workforce development? If you're out there thinking, gosh, I, I, I'd like to know more about these services. Is it just a matter of picking up the phone and calling? I, I, I think it is that simple. Or as you said, 
go to the ACAP uh, down the bottom there and, and put on the survey, you know, what your needs are. And I think that'll also get through proper channels. Maybe it goes through Aaron first or goes to Kathy uh, Williams first. I'm not sure. But either way, the, the information gets to the right people in a short amount of time. And we, and we follow up and, and we have daily sessions on Zoom and we talk about different referrals and, and, and how to best help that person. So I think, yeah, it, it just starts with a phone call, you know, or an email to ACAP, you know, that, that's awesome. Great. So what haven't we talked about about workforce that, or any of the programs that we've talked about the messaging that you wanted to both get across? Dan, I'll start with you. Anything we haven't covered? Yeah, I, I think uh, during this time period of COVID-19, um, there, there, uh, people are uh, people and businesses and, you know, they're, they're trying to comply and, and abide by uh, the, the wishes of the governor and, and even wishes of their own people, you know, to, to kind of um, keep them in mind that, you know, without people, you really don't have much, okay? And, 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 and just to, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, I think, to, to recover from this. Uh, but I think if we all pull through and uh, put our resources together and and assist one another, uh, I think I think we will come out of this a little stronger as a community because we we've, we've never we're, we're kind of learning on the fly as we go, and uh, you know uh, no one person has all the answers, so so we're adapting and and dealing with the subject as it comes up. And I think that's, that's great for us because we've always had that kind of flexibility. You know, uh, you even doing this show, you know what I mean? This, uh, this is just getting the word out to folks about different, different programs and services that we still continue to run, even though, quote, the building is closed to the public, but the services go on. And, and I, think, uh, I think that's great, Jason. I really do. Stan, and before we go to Aaron with that question, I wanted to I, I ask all of my guests, what is your advice for folks out there who are trying to just get through and navigate through these difficult times? Well, I think I think if people, uh, you know, uh, stay strong, uh, if they're having a hard time, make a call uh, because I'm sure they're not alone in any given situation. Uh, reach out to us and, and we can, you know, do what we can and get you in touch with the right people to hopefully solve any problem that comes up. Uh, we're, we're pretty resourceful that way, really. That's what we're here for. Thank you very much, Stan. Aaron Benson, what haven't we covered uh, that you wanted to make sure folks knew about, know about and, um, and your advice for folks? Okay. so. Healthcare, I would say that a lot of people are probably thinking that you sign up for healthcare during a certain time of year, and this is not that time of year typically, but if you've lost your job, this is the time that you can take advantage. So I would encourage you to call Stan and he can walk you through what is a, a complicated at times process. Um, he, call and make an appointment. You know, don't think that, uh, uh, you may not be eligible. Look at those guidelines on the website and then call and make an appointment. Um, I think we have some openings on Friday. So um, I would definitely uh, encourage you to call. Um, and then workforce development, I think the thing that I would also say is uh, I want businesses to think of us too. Not just individuals looking for work, but businesses who are looking for workers. We have programs that we can set people up uh, with work experiences where we actually pay the individual to work at a business site. Um, and this gives the business an opportunity to say, hmm, does this person fit in and at no cost to them. So um, that's a great opportunity also on the job training uh, where we pay a, a certain percentage of the wage. So I would, if businesses are looking for employees, I would definitely uh, ask them to contact us as well because we're here for employers as well as for people who are looking for work. Um, how to get through, uh, boy, you have to have a sense of humor. Um, just look, I look for ways to laugh. 
uh, as often as I can. And the other thing is, is to connect with people. And I know not everybody has access to Zoom or, you know, FaceTime on their smartphone or whatever, but um, if, if you do use it, I mean, I call my sisters in Florida, but both of them are, and I, I call, I, I've been calling them all my life. But for some reason during this COVID experience, now I'm FaceTiming and my sister and I were like, why haven't we been doing this all along? I mean, to me, it's just so wonderful to see a face to see that expression, that smile. It's, so I would really encourage people to connect, connect with family, connect with friends, connect with coworkers that you haven't seen, to call them you know, off, offline or something like that. It's, uh, people get me through. Yeah, indeed, speaking of coworkers that I haven't seen, Stan, it's been great to see you because I haven't seen you since uh, we sent you home to, to work at home and it's nice to, to check in with you uh, today. That's probably about 10 pounds ago. <laughs> You know, Stan, you're doing well in terms of you, you in term, I was expecting more COVID hair. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must have gotten in to, to get a haircut because you're doing well. <laughs> no, really, I didn't. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, it's nice to see you well and doing well and uh, enjoying uh, a beautiful day at, the, at your camp, your home that, that looks like a, a, a really oh, yeah. a comfortable camp. So. <laughs> Well, thank you both uh, for joining us. And before we, and thank you all for joining us. Before we leave you today, we want to remind you of uh, this county resource, aroostacommunity.com, a great place to go if you need help or want to give help to others. Uh, there's a website, but you can also call us at 764-3721 if you're unable to navigate the website or just prefer to call for assistance. We'll certainly help you with that um, right here from our office. And finally, as our guests have told us, we're all in this together. So please do consider reaching out, uh, connecting with us uh, over the phone or acap-info at acap-me.org. Or uh, we're regularly posting on Facebook for, for uh, updates, very timely updates there. And you can also check out our YouTube channel um, there where you can find uh, some great uh, past episodes of this program and some wonderful uh, uh, lessons that some of our early care and education professionals and our prevention team are, are putting online there uh, for your viewing pleasure. And finally, our snapshot of the week used to be snapshot of the day. Uh, this is the links for learning look promising and at, at the Hope and Prosperity Wellness uh, Shelter as well. Uh, it's not necessarily Christmas time, but our Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter at UMPI uh, is displaying this paper chain decoration that represents a gift that we'll keep on giving for one of our shelter residents. Staff at the shelter, along with staff at SAD1, Adult and Community Education, working remotely with the customers, have been uh, working with a few residents to help them complete courses toward earning their high school diploma. And this link actually represents completed assignments toward earning a course credit on their way toward earning their diploma. So by the looks of it, this Christmas gift may come early because this student uh, and resident of the uh, Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter is doing quite well uh, at getting uh, his lessons uh, done remotely. And so with that, uh, that is today's ACAP today for this week. Uh, we are pleased to have welcomed Stan and Aaron to the program and all of you into the program today. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP today. Have a great week. Yep. Thank you.